And that tape piece about Crystal, you know, she was worried. So we actually sent her to cardiologist Dr. John Kennedy to get tested to find out what may be causing her fainting. When a patient comes to me and their complaint is fainting, there's three things that are really important that I look for. First, I check for a blocked heart valve. We're looking at your heart, okay, with this ultrasound technology. When you faint, it's always from the same thing, lack of blood flow to your brain. And what I'm really looking for is any narrowings or any blockages in those heart valves. This valve, the left atrium, it's opening and closing normally, and there's no blockage, the color flow, tell me that your heart's working appropriately and blood is flowing in the correct direction. There's no evidence of a blocked heart valve. Second, I check for an arrhythmia. You can actually pass out from your heart going too slow or too fast. What's hard about diagnosing arrhythmias is sometimes they're elusive, they're hard to catch. And so this crystal is called a Zeo patch. It's gonna go on your chest just like that and I can monitor every single heartbeat for up to 10 to 14 days. And that gives me ample amount of time to catch the abnormal heart rhythm. Once I've ruled those two things out, I do a final test called the tilt table test. With this test, we're actually trying to recreate your symptoms of fainting. When we tilt you, your body responds to the tilt by trying to maintain blood pressure. And just so you know, you could faint. And that's why we have you strapped in. How are you feeling right now? A little, a little lightheaded right now. We're going to monitor you for an additional 15 minutes or so, and it's really going to help us figure out what's going on. Well, Crystal is here as well as Dr. Kennedy. Thank you both. And the good news is you're between two doctors, so if something <laughs> happens, we're going to take really I'll, good I'll, care I'll, of you. I'll try. <laughs> which is an important point. If you do tend to faint, you need to make sure you don't get into situations that put you at risk. You mentioned it in the clip, and I want to reiterate this. Lack of blood flow to the brain is what causes most of these syncopal episodes, these fainting episodes. And it's quite simple because blood is what provides oxygen for your brain. So normally, if you're getting good blood flow to your brain, then everything's fine because your brain is getting the oxygen that it needs. But occasionally, particularly for people who dealt with fainting episodes, what can happen instead is that you don't get adequate blood flow to your brain and when that happens, you're not getting a proper oxygenation. And as the, you're seeing what happens there, that is when you're starting to feel very lightheaded. You're not getting oxygen. And at this point, boom, that's when you pass out. And that's why we sent you to see Dr. Kennedy. So what did you find? So, well, we figured out what happened to Crystal uh, with the tilt table test that we did in the hospital. And it turns out Crystal has what's called vasovagal syncope. And vasovagal syncope occurs when your body overreacts to a stressful stimulus like the sight of blood, as in your case. And the vagus nerve, and vagus comes from uh, the word vagabond or the wanderer. It's connected to the, the uh, esophagus or the swallowing tube, a lot of our GI tract, and also our heart and blood vessels. And when it gets triggered or stimulated, our heart rate drops and our blood pressure drops. You get no blood flow to your brain and you pass out. And the good news is, is that you have something that's very treatable. You have this vasovagal syncope, which is also known as a common faint. And the simplest thing you can do is avoid those triggers and make sure that you're really well hydrated. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people I hear, and I'm sure Travis has heard a lot about this, people are out at a concert, you're dehydrated, you're standing for long periods of time, and just people drop, you know, all the time. And the biggest time to worry is if you're ever in a pool or you're somewhere driving, that is when you have to pay particular attention to Absolutely. avoid these stimuli because the last thing you want to do is put yourself at risk of as well as other people. Really and... scary. Thank you so much, though. You're welcome.